There is no sound on earth that sounds like that other than the NES Zapper. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here today talking about the NES Zapper, the great games that they had for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm going to rank them from worst to best. I was so fascinated with the NES Zapper when it first came out. I was like, how does it work? Why does it work? What's going on? Well, more on how it works. Let's take you really quickly to the shooting gallery. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here live in the shooting gallery. I loved these when I was growing up. It's like a live action video game. Simple enough, you got your gun, you got your target. You shoot the target, I'm gonna go for the uh, big bear right in the middle here. Oh, this thing over here in the corner. That's it, got it. The beautiful thing is, the Nintendo Zapper works very similar, except for it's backwards. It actually works as the lights in the TV, and the target is inside the gun. Go for this whiskey bottle right here. So whereas at a shooting gallery, like what you just saw, the light from the gun goes to the target, on the NES Zapper, this is the target. And the light, that white square on the screen, is what sends the signal. Crazy. If you're going to be playing Zapper games using a Zapper, you got to use the old school CRT, man. Now, although technically they had just under 20 games that used the Zapper, I wanted to focus on the games that were Zapper exclusive. You couldn't play these without the Zapper. I mean, there are games like Operation Wolf where the Zapper is optional. And then there's also games like The Adventures of Bayou Billy that's a, you know, action game, but then also uses the Zapper in some levels. I'm not going to use those on this list. These are games that are just the Zapper. And I'm also only sticking with the licensed games on these ones, not like the unlicensed stuff. And even with those games out of the way, we still have just about 10 games. We're going to rank them from worst to best, starting with To The Earth? So in no offense to anyone, To The Earth, where you start mission one as Uranus, this game should rank higher just on that alone. But no, I can't, I can't put it anywhere above the other games on this list. I mean, the game itself, it's a good introduction to like a Zapper game, especially if you know the whole space idea as well. It's a little generic. A little generic. I mean, you just see the ships in the background and you just have to shoot them. That's all you gotta do. And if you see the cursor flying around the screen, well, I'm capturing this footage via emulation. So keep that in mind for the rest of this video. Every once in a while, there'll be a thing down in the corner. Shoot that. That'll, that'll, that'll help you out for sure. But other than that, I like the idea of where it's going. It's just a, it's a space exploration shooting game, but you're just, as you can see, this is, this is all it is. This is really all it is. This is to the earth. It's for the Nintendo. Uh, I'm ranking this my least favorite. This game would be considered the worst, I suppose. Up next, believe it or not, we have Bandai's Shooting Range. And you would think this one would rank higher on this list. Kind of like the last one, there's not a lot of variety. I mean, the fact that it is floor player, that stands for something. I mean, right up front, the very first stage here, there's that bit of insensitivity that even in the late 80s shouldn't have been allowed. And I understand it's a Bandai game. Maybe this game was made in Japan. I have no idea. I don't know. However, I mean, they could have done better. They could have done better than this, right? I mean, I'm not just missing the graphics or anything like that. It's just, this is the shooting range. I mean, the shoot, they, they didn't need to use people. It's a shooting range. They could have just had targets and that would have been okay. I guess they had to have something that would make it so you could lose life too. I'm not sure. Now, shooting range does have two options of gameplay on this one, now, along with the multiplayer. Of course, there's the normal game and then you have the party game. The party game is a little bit more like a traditional classic shooting range. Well, kind of. It just has these things that pop up, almost like whack-a-mole in a way. <laughs> but either way, uh, this is the game. This is it. And again, I was kind of hoping for more. Working up the list, we have Gotcha, the sport. This is from LJN. Believe it or not, it's not a bad LJN game as far as LJN games go. Uh, this is Paintball. Now, there was a small sliver of time in the late 80s when Paintball started becoming popular, but they didn't really call it Paintball. In a couple of instances, they called it Gotcha. As in, you shoot someone, you get paint on them, and then you yell out, Gotcha? I suppose they even made a movie called Gotcha. There was actually a movie that stars the blonde kid from Revenge of the Nerds <laughs> in this movie. I'll let you look that up. I'll let you do the research on that one. Um, it has a slight paintball theme to it. It's actually kind of a decent game. As you can see, it's a little bit like an Operation Wolf. You do use your controller as well as your zapper on this one. Just the D-pad, the left and right, that'll scroll you left and right to uh, shoot all the enemies here before they get to you. And it's kind of a capture the flag thing. You gotta make sure that, you know, they're not gonna get the flag. You gotta protect what's going on. Get where you're going, get the flag, get it back. Man, 
This game is actually pretty good. There's some games on this list I like a little bit more, but gotcha, if you're into Zapper games and you're exploring all the Zapper games, you might see it at conventions and stuff like that. Goes for super cheap. I think it's really decent. Watching videos all the way through, subscribing to your favorite channels, it's one of the best ways that YouTube will make sure that the videos that you like will show up on your homepage and not like random videos from eight years ago. You wanna see the newest, cleanest videos, make sure you're subscribed. Not just to my channel, but all your favorite channels. Undoubtedly the most popular Zapper game of all time has to be Duck Hunt. I'm going to place it right here on the list. Three options on this one, one duck, two ducks, or clay shooting. And simple enough, the ducks fly around, you shoot them, the dog will hold up your trophies. You don't shoot the ducks, the dog will laugh at you. As kind of a thing that was being passed around as a, I didn't know you could do this, I didn't know you could do that. If you do have controller one plugged in, you can use the D-pad to control the ducks, uh, especially on the one duck mode and really annoy your uh, other brother and sister or whatever. <laughs> or, I mean, on the other hand, use it to their favor. Like, always have the duck fly in a certain quarter to make it easier for them to shoot. I don't know. Duck Hunt, always fun, still fun today. My personal favorite part of Duck Hunt, however, is the clay pigeon shooting. It's literally just they fly out these clay discs, you know, they pull those out and you shoot them, and you gain some points by doing that. I thought this one had more of a challenge, and I just liked this one more. I think it's because the dog didn't laugh at me if I missed. <laughs> when it comes down to it. Duck Hunt along with the Clay Pigeon, uh, it's it's awesome. It still is today. A little bit more of an unknown Zapper game, but still is pretty cool to check out. This is Gumshoe, believe it or not, from 1986. This Zapper game is a platformer, believe it or not. Now you play as this Gumshoe, kind of collecting balloons as you go through the level. You jump by shooting at him, that's right. When you shoot the guy, I mean, he's always moving, he's always walking, and he never stops. But when you shoot him, that's when he jumps. And that's when it brings in kind of the challenge, because every once in a while, more things will come into frame. And you have to get rid of those too, so you're shooting other things while trying to keep track of your guy to make sure that he jumps in the right spot. Pretty interesting gameplay, pretty interesting mechanic. I don't know the idea about shooting someone to make him jump, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but again, this is Nintendo from 1986. And Gumshoe, man, <laughs> might be worth checking out. Another early Nintendo game. This one, 1984, are you kidding me? This game came out before the NES came out in America. That's how old school this game is. Now this is the classic draw game. You get your timer, as soon as they tell you to fire, that's when you fire. Fun game, cutesy, cartoony. <laughs> you know, things like that, that's perfect, I love it. This game has kind of been brought back in mini games, like in the Kirby series, you might see something like this. These characters were also featured in Super Smash Brothers uh, as Duck Hunt's character for the Final Smash, or the Super Smash, whatever that thing's called. I still do like this game quite a bit today, and um, I think I think Wild Gunman's great. And three modes, just like with Duck Hunt, there's one or two, and there's also the gang mode. And the gang mode, I think a little bit more like Hogan's Alley. Pop open the doors, swing open the shutters, you get them before they get you. Yeah, pretty neat. I'm, I've always been a fan of Wild Gunman, love this one. I just wanted to click that button a few more times. It's just, it's so addicting! It doesn't annoy me because I'm not the one doing it. And you heard me mention Hogan's Alley, perfect opportunity for me to bring this one up. Also came out in 1984. Again, three modes of gameplay. And it took me literally until about a couple of years ago to realize, I wonder if they use the cardboard cutouts on purpose. You're not shooting actual people. You're shooting their cardboard cutout, right? And that makes more sense, not just for the bad guys, but also for the, uh, for the civilians. Now, not all of these are going to be bad guys. You gotta make sure that you don't wanna shoot the cop, you don't wanna shoot, you know, the lady. If you do that, then that's a miss for you. That counts against you. But Hogan's Alley is just great. It's just fun, because it also, it gives you to have that timing, like Wild Gunman, but it has you do critical thinking at a moment's notice. It reminds me a lot of that scene from Men in Black. I'm not gonna play for you the scene on this channel, but if you've seen Men in Black at the very beginning, the training and all that, you know exactly what I'm talking about, with the aliens on the street and the one girl, yeah. And then Trick Shot is the other thing you can do on this game. Little mini game for you. Shoot the can, try to get the best score. That's kind of a fun idea here. Yeah, just a little bit of something extra. They, they didn't even have to include this, but they did it just for you. Love it. Continuing to work our way up to the best games, look at the intro to Freedom Force. Now this has to be one of the best intro scenes to any NES game. Came out in 1988 from Sunsoft, Freedom Force did. You can do one or two player on this game if you'd like, and like the other games, you're just gonna scroll back and forth. No, this game is going to scroll for you. You don't need to push anything. And then another critical thinking thing where the thing's gonna open up and if it's a bad guy, shoot him. If not, don't, you know? <laughs> it makes sense to me, right? 
There is something about this game, I don't know, it has that Sunsoft quality that I absolutely love. And Freedom Force, when it comes to Zapper games, is absolutely one of the best, in my opinion. Different scenes, different shows, different availability. Pretty fun to check out. If you're into the uh, Zapper games, Freedom Force should be really high on your list of games that you should check out. We got Trick Shooting for the NES. This came out in 1989. And it starts off, oh my goodness, with the, uh, the dude and the assistant. Oh, I don't feel good about this. <laughs> I missed the apple anyway. Oh, I love it. This one actually has a few options for you to choose from in Shooting Gallery for the NES. I like the fact that it's cartoony. I like the fact that it just looks fun. Love the colors in this game, and the accuracy is really good too. Just simple things like, you know, pop the balloons, shoot the balloons before they go to the top of the screen. Other ones, again, like you have the MC as well as the assistant, and they're, uh, you know, throwing discs up in the air. You gotta shoot them before they land, before they crash. For some reason, probably my favorite one is this called Window Panes, where you see the items fall down, but you can't shoot them until they're out of the window's view. So you can see them come down, but then only when they're away from the window, that's when you can get them. Oh, I just, I don't know, just something about that made it kind of fun for me. Like, I have to explain myself to you, come on now. And the final one, the Fun Follies, little variety for you. If you're looking for the Zapper games to play, trick shooting for the NES, that's the one to grab for sure. You thought these Zapper games were interesting, wait till you see how my kid held the gun at the shooting gallery. I like how you're holding your gun there. No, that's it. How'd you do?